Wow, this is awesome. I'm not here by myself today. <laughs> you guys can be seated. Amen. Amen. Oh, wow. So happy to see some of you today. I'm happy that there are many of you joining us online um, still. And, and I just want to welcome you today, Lighthouse family and friends. And today, I want to jump right into today's word. And today's word is titled, Lord, send me a sign. Lord, send me a sign. How many of us have said something similar to that? Okay. All right. We're going to talk about that today. I want to start off with a story, though. I want to start off with a story about a girl named Katie. And Katie had a friend named Charlie. And Katie really wanted Charlie to accept Christ, to become a Christian. Now, Katie met Charlie, and when she met Charlie, she thought, this is my future husband. The only problem is that he's not saved. And so I got to, you know, because I don't want to be unequally yoked, let me try to get him to accept Christ. Let me do my part. You know, there's a lot of people out there that want to get their supposed uh, husband or wife saved so that they can enter into a relationship. So what she does is every time she's with him or every time she's near him, she begins to, like, throw the gospel there, you know. She's you know, trying to sow, throw the seed and throw the gospel. And, and it, was one, it was always back to back. Every time she would see him, she would try again. She would see him and she would try again. She would see him. And finally, she was like, Charlie, what is it with you? Like, why are you being so stubborn? Don't you see how great this is? Don't you see how much Jesus loves you? Don't you see that this, that this is a good thing? Partially because of her frustration, because she wants to, you know, she wants to date Charlie. But, but, but she also is frustrated because she doesn't see how, that he can't see how great Jesus is. So she says, what is it going to take? What is it going to take, Jesus? So um, Charlie, so Charlie says in response, something that we've heard many times before, Charlie says, okay, okay, this is what it would take for me to believe. I would have to see Jesus himself do a miracle before my own eyes. And when he does that, then I'll believe. Has anyone heard uh, someone say say that in their lives or so forth? Has anyone? We've all heard that before. Today's passage, however, indicates that this is wishful thinking for many. If somebody's heart is already fully hardened to the gospel, if their heart is is already hardened uh, for accepting Christ and seeing Jesus himself do a miracle may not convince them. Because to believe, to believe means to have faith first. We have to have faith before we can believe. Let's turn to Mark chapter 8, verses 11 through 12. Mark chapter 8 verses 11 through 12. <clears throat> when the Pharisees heard that Jesus had arrived, they came and started to argue with him, testing him. They demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. When he heard this, he sighed deeply in his spirit and said, why do these people keep demanding a miraculous sign? I tell you the truth. I will not give this generation any such sign. We ask for a sign. We ask for a sign. Many of us have done this, or we know someone that's done this. As I mentioned before, this is actually a common thing, asking for a sign. People ask for a sign because they want to see a sign before they can believe. You got to show me so that I can believe. This is, this is the show me world that we're living in. We got to see it for ourselves. We got to touch it for ourselves. We got to smell it for ourselves so that it's true, so that it's real, so, that it, so we can know that it exists. That's the kind of world we live in, you know? You know, especially we're living in a society that there's so much information. There's so many facts, right? Facts. Because, you know, we have the internet. And everything on the internet is facts, Right? <laughs> that, that's, that's the world we live in. And so there's, because of all the facts that we're hearing and learning, there's confusion, there's drama, there's, there's chaos, you know, um, with so much sin. What happens is hearts are being hardened to believing in God. And now everybody wants a sign to believe. 
show me a sign to believe. You know, um, we're living even in times where those that had once been close to God, those that were chosen and walking with God throughout time or some situations, they have, they have grown further from God and their hearts are now cold and they too are saying, hey, give me a sign. Show me a sign if you're real. Show me a sign so that I can believe. And this is, this is what I want, to, I, want, I want you to hear what I'm saying. Show me a sign so that I may believe. We know that we have to have faith before we can believe. So many times we look up at the heavens and we say, God, if you truly exist, show me a sign. You know, now I'm not saying that God can never answer a prayer that way. There are many testimonies that some people have shouted, God, I need you to show me that you're real. I need you to show yourself in this. And God has in his love and his mercy and his grace, and, and he has shown himself. He has. But to believe that the only way we can believe in God, to think that the only way we can believe in God is to needing a sign is wrong thinking. We live a life, this life of faith, and what the Lord desires is quite the opposite. Let's take a look at John. I want to, I want to just mention this. Look, look, take a look at John chapter 20, verse 29. What, what's happening here, right? You know, Jesus has resurrected, and he's made himself visible to his disciples. He's, he shows up, and he's like, hey, guys, I'm back. I said I'll, I'll raise, uh, rise up on the third day, so here I am. And he's talking to his disciples. Thomas, he, I don't know where he's at. He misses the, the, the get-together, right? And now um, Jesus is not present when Thomas shows up. And they're like, dude, you just missed it. Jesus was here. Come on, man. Don't, I, don't, don't give. Oh, he's here in spirit or something. Yeah. No, no, he was here. He was here. And what's Thomas's response? Thomas tells him, he's like, dude, I, I got I to feel for myself the wound. I, I got to see it and touch it for myself so that I know it's real. So that I can believe that he resurrected. So that I can believe that he appeared to us. I need to see it and touch it for myself. So then Jesus lovingly and gracefully, he appears to Thomas, right? And then he tells Thomas this. Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. You know, um, I was talking to my wife, and she, she mentioned something to me. She's like, yo, everyone's always kind of like, man, what it would have been like to walk with Jesus. How blessed those disciples were. This is a conversation Camille and I were having. How blessed those disciples were to be walking with Jesus. They must have been super blessed. And then she says, yeah, but according to this verse, we're more blessed. We are more blessed because we are believing in a Jesus that we have not seen with our eyes. We are believing in a Jesus that we have not heard maybe audibly. We are believing in a Jesus that we hadn't had the chance to hang out with. So technically, all of us that are saying we are a Christ follower, for those of us that are saying we believe, we believe, we're more blessed than those disciples were. I mean, isn't that like a cool little feeling? Doesn't that give you a, like a cool feeling to have? Like, man, oh, I, I'm more blessed than, than they were because I believe without seeing. I mean, how hard would it be to believe when he's uh, multiplying the fish and the bread, he's healing the blind, you know, he's making the lame walk, and, and you're, you got front row seats to that? But what happens when you don't see any of that? Does that mean it doesn't exist? Does that mean that he's no longer Lord? We believe, and for us believing without seeing, we are blessed. Unfortunately, the truth is that some of us believe under specific circumstances. Some of us believe and have faith under specific circumstances when Jesus shows up. When he shows up in our lives, like, that's right, I serve a God that, that, that's real. I serve a God that's real. He shows up in my circumstances. 
You know, we praise them when we're on the mountaintops. How many of, I mean, come on, how many of us know that when we're on those mountaintops, we're praising them like, woo, thank you, Jesus. I love you. Oh, you're awesome. You're amazing. How easy is it to worship and to believe and to have faith when we're on those mountaintops? How about when we're prospering in the natural? The bank account is full. The bills are paid. Oh, got a little extra to do something with. Oh, that's kind of cool. God, you're awesome. You know, when we serve, we, 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 we get excited. We believe and we have faith when things go according to our way. We serve him. We serve God. We serve his people. We serve his church when things are going our way, when, we, when, we, when we're in the good times and we can believe because believing and having faith in those times is, is a lot easier, right? Some people, some of us, we believe when our prayers and petitions are being answered on our time. And that's the key words, on our time. You know, Lord, I need you to open this door. Oh, oh, the door's open. Awesome. God is good. As opposed to, God, open this door. Open this door and be consistent in our prayer. And then, and then, and then just seeking him and, and, and waiting patiently upon his time. You know, the sad truth is that many will be left behind because they are waiting to see things before they believe. That's a harsh truth. Harsh. People are going to be left behind when Christ comes back for his bride because too many people are waiting to see certain things. They're waiting to, 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 to see or to touch or to feel a certain way before they can believe in Christ, before they can believe that, 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 that Jesus desires relationship with us, right? You know, Believing the Lord and obeying his word is not always going to feel good. I have to tell you this. It's not always going to feel good. It's not always going to look good. It's not going to be peaches and cream like some people say. You know, following, believing his word and being obedient to, to, to what he's asking us doesn't always look good. But you are blessed. You are blessed for believing and walking by faith and not by sight. You are blessed for that. So, Lord, give me a sign. We go back to that. We go back to that statement. Show me a sign, God. I have to say this. Um, actually, there's all those people here. Look at your neighbor and say, the word is enough. All right, let me explain what that means. Or if you're home, right, look at whoever you're sitting with on the couch and say, hey, the word is enough. Listen, Christian, believer, follower of Christ. God doesn't need to show you a sign. If you are a believer, if you, are, if you have accepted Christ into your life, he doesn't need to show you a sign so that you could believe in something. Mostly those signs are for the unbeliever. When God does these miraculous things, when, when, when he does it, it's so that the unbeliever can believe, right? Because unfortunately some are going to be like Thomas. In order to believe, they're going to need to see. But if you are a Christian, if you are a follower of Christ, then you don't need to be asking for a sign. See, God doesn't need to show you a sign before uh, you, you figure out how you should treat your neighbor. It's in the Word of God. God doesn't need you to show you a sign to, to show you, like, you know, um, should I give to the needy? Should I give to the church? Should I sow? I mean, show me a sign, God. No, he doesn't need to do that because it's in his word. God doesn't need to show you a sign to say, you know, God, you know, show me a sign if you want me to serve in your kingdom. Show me a sign if you want me to get involved. Show me a sign. It's in his word. Show me a sign of how I should respond when someone speaks to me this way. Show me a sign, Lord, how to deal with this person because, you know, I'm about to lose it. Show me. No, it's in his word how we should live. It's in his word how we should act. It's in his word how we should think. We don't need signs for that, church. So many, so many of us are so caught up with wanting a sign to, to, to get to the next step. Show me a sign. For, and it's in his word. It's in his word. But, but can, I, can I say some harsh truth again? This is the problem. 
The problem is that although all the answers are in the Word of God, many of us are just lazy. And we don't want to read His Word for ourselves. I hope that when you hear these Sunday sermons, that you write down the notes or, or you take the verses and you read it for yourself. And that you study it. What if I come up here and say something that's not true? You need to go into the Word of God. I'm human. I'm a man. I'm not perfect. You guys need to go into the Word. The Word is perfect. The Word doesn't lie. The Word doesn't make mistakes. But the thing is, we get so lazy, and what we do is we say, yeah, I know it's in His Word, but God, just give me a sign. Just, just tell me what to do. I don't really want to read about it right now. Just, just tell me what you want me to do. I don't want to read about how you want me to respond, because it's just too much. I mean, I got so much going on right now. I got the kids in sports. I got work. I got all this stuff. I mean, I got a bunch of Zoom meetings now. I don't have time to read the Bible, so, but because I know that you are God, right? Just tell me what to do, and I'll do it. There's a lot of us guilty of doing that. Show me a sign, God. Tell me what to do next. And he's like, uh, I did tell you what to do next. Read it so that you can know. The word is enough to birth faith. Romans 10, 17 says this. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're, some people are saying, Lord, show me a sign so I can believe. Show me a sign that I may have faith. Show me a sign. And the Bible is telling us that faith will come by hearing the word of God. Read his word and you will have faith. <laughs> Listen, some of you, when I talk to you guys, I know you're like, oh, here, pastor goes again with the Bible study. Oh, here, I, I know, pastor, I didn't go to Bible study. Oh, I know, I know it's on Thursdays. I know I could even be in pajamas and be in Bible study. I know it's online. It's, I, you know, it can't be made any more comfortable for me. But I just got too much going on right now, and so I don't have time for Bible study. And I know that some of you guys are like, he's always talking about these Bible studies. But listen to me. It's in those Bible studies that you're learning the Word of God. It's in those Bible studies that you're trying to, you, you get to get deeper into the verses and say, okay, so this is what he meant. This is what he wants me to do. This is what it means for my life. Okay, I get it. And then as we are going through those studies, our faith is being increased because we are hearing the Word. We are learning the Word, and it's through that that our faith grows. I encourage everybody, from the visitor to the member to the leadership, especially the leadership. Because how can we lead if we're not eating? How can I feed you if I'm not eating? Sunday's sermon is like a snack. This is a snack. But you got to eat throughout the week. Imagine if you only ate for half hour at once a week. How weak would you be? I don't even know if you'd live. I mean, maybe you could live if you, had, if you had some water, right, in between. But imagine the state of your, phys your physical state, how weak you would be. Do you understand that that's how your spiritual life is right now if you are just eating on Sunday morning? Do you understand how weak your spiritual life is? You're starving it. It wants to eat. It wants to, and, and the word is food. Men, to the men watching, right? To the men. To the men, you have been chosen. The word says that you are to be the high priest of your home. Do you know what that means? That means you, you need to rise up and you need to eat good so that you can feed your children, your wife, your families, and you can raise the children up in the ways of the Lord. That's what it means. Our faith, it's our faith in him and his word that leads to obedience. How, how are we expected to be obedient to a God if we have no faith? And, we're, and we don't have any faith because we don't believe and we're asking for a sign so we can believe nothing will ever get done. In the beginning, in the beginning, let's go back to Genesis. You go back to Genesis, man, everything goes back to the beginning. But you can go back to Genesis, right? And it was in Genesis that it had never rained before. Can you imagine that? It never rained before. If you didn't know, now you know. It never rained. 
it never rained in the beginning. The water would just kind of like come up from the ground and water the plants. Never rain. And God tells Noah, he says, Noah, it, I'm, it's going to rain, and it's going to rain hard. It's gonna, I'm, I'm going to flood this place with rain. So I need you to build an ark so that you can keep your family safe. And while you're at it, put all these animals in there too. Noah had never seen rain. He had never heard of such thing as rain. I mean, wait, wait, God, wait. Water is going to fall from the sky? Water? That's never happened before. No, no, sorry, God. Can't build the ark. I need to, all right, make it, make it, make it rain right here. Right? <laughs> let, let, let some water droplets fall on this, on my hand right now. Right now. And, and after that happens, then I'll believe. I'll trust you. I'll believe in you. I'll have faith when the water begins to fall on my hands and I feel it for myself because I have never seen rain before. Now you're telling me to just believe you? Well, guess what? When you have faith in a powerful God, you believe him when he says something. Noah didn't question it. The world thought he was crazy. Listen, uh, uh, side note. <laughs> Some people will think I'm crazy for the love and for the passion that I will have for my God. So be it. So be it. Let people think you're crazy. Listen, those people that are judging you or thinking that you're crazy, man, Jamal is crazy. Him and his Jesus stuff. Yo, let them because they aren't going to be sitting there on the day of judgment. They don't judge your eternity. It was by faith that Sarah, in her 90s, is popping out babies. Well, baby. But yeah, like, like in her 90s, she was old, she was barren, and she, was, she believed God when God said, I'm going to give you a child. Yo, that's faith, right? That's faith. She believed him. She, didn't, she, she believed him, and, and it was through faith. That, that, that she had a child, a, a son, and through that son, a nation would come. It was by faith that Gideon, David, um, um, Samson, many others we read in the Bible, including other prophets, you know, my, minor, major, all, pro, you know, just there's so many stories in the Bible of men of God, women of God, that through their faith, have overthrown kingdoms through their faith. You know, um, um, they, they, they rule with justice. They receive what God has promised. You know, it was through faith. It was through their faith that the mouths of lions were shut. I mean, what do we see? We see that if you put a person in a lion's den with hungry lions, you know, because we know and we believe, right? This is what? This is what we have. They're going to the, eat this person. The, naturally, it's, the lion will eat this person. Because that's what we've seen, that's what we, that's what we know. But to have faith is to go beyond what we know in this earth. To have faith is to say, you know what, it doesn't make sense, but I'm going to trust the God that I serve even though it may not make sense. And the faith Closed the, the mouths of the lions. It was faith that, that quenched those, the, the, the flames within the furnace for the three Hebrew boys. It was faith. It was faith that many escaped death. Faith in God that turned weakness into strength, that made whole armies turn around and run. Come on. And, and, and this is the faith that we're talking about, and, I'm just, and I just told you, how do we get faith? It's through his word, not by asking for a sign. Come on, church, I'm trying to tell you, if, if, you're, if you're saying, I'm a Christian, I love Jesus, I'm going to tell you right now, get into his word. Get into his word because that's going to build your faith. That's going to increase your faith, and you're going to be walking around the way that these men and women of God walked around. It's the same God that we serve. He can do all this today. Get into his word, and I guarantee that your mind will change. 
Get into his word. I guarantee that your speech will change. Some of us are like, oh, you don't want me talking to people because, you know, my words, they kind of slip here and there, and, 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 and I say this. And, and Get into his word. Your language will change. Your thoughts will change. You're, you know, you will begin to walk in a way like if you were walking like this before, you begin to walk like this, straight, walking, knowing that you're walking with this spiritual authority, walk, knowing that you're walking in victory. If you get into his word, your family, your household, your destiny, your purpose, it depends on it. It, that's, the, that's the bottom line. Your destiny, your future, your family, it depends on you. Are you getting into the Word? Are you leading? Do you have faith? Many are walking in defeat right now. We know people that are walking defeated, spiritually just torn down. Things are just going wrong. Oh, my life is horrible. It's always one thing after another thing after another thing. And, and we all know people like that, and we try. When we see them come, we're like, oh, get out of here. Because you know, it pulls us down too, right? It pulls us down too. So um, <laughs> I have, we know people that are walking in defeat, and, and they're walking like this. And, and the thing is that, that when things rise up in our lives, right, some of us are so quick to just throw in the towel. We're just, just throw the towel and I quit. I can't do it. It's too much for me. It's too hard for me. I can't, I can't handle it. You know, I, I can't keep, I can't, I just, it's too much. I'm not strong enough. I'm not smart enough. And we throw in the towel. Again, you know why you're so weak? You're weak because your spirit is not strong enough to fight. And every time there's a, a battle within your flesh and your spirit, the flesh will win. Because you're not feeding your spirit. It's a simple answer that is so hard for people to do. Read his word. Study his word. Get connected with other people that are studying his word. Talk about it. Learn about it. We're here, the church is here to pray, to encourage you, to, to, to support you. Uh, and I'm not saying that you can't ask for prayer, and I'm not saying that you can't tell us what's going on in your life, but I'm going to tell you right now, when we're going through all those hard times in your life, those are the times that you need to be yourself in prayer as well. Like, listen, listen, I don't want to discourage petitions. I don't want to discourage people from saying pray for this. But one thing that I've noticed, right, I've noticed, and I know Erica has noticed this, is that people say, hey, pray for, pray for my sister. And when prayer time comes, that person's not even in the prayer. Okay, well, we'll pray for you, but again, again, I'll pray for your sister. But this is the, these are the same things where I say, do you want this enough? How, about, how, about, how much do you want this? Do you want God to heal your sister? Do you want God to deliver your son? Do you want God to, to, to break the chains of bondage within your household, within your family? Do you want God to save your marriage? Do you want God to do these things? Then, okay, Ask your petition, but get on your knees and pray. But we're too lazy. We want somebody else to do it. Yo, Danny, you pray. You pray because, you know, I just got things going on. I don't have time to pray right now. But, but I know God answers prayers because since I know God answers prayers, I'll have you guys, you three people pray because, you know, God says there's two or three. So you three pray for, what, for my needs. I just don't have time to pray myself. Come on. It, it, doesn't it sound like, oh, wow, that sounds really bad when you put it like that? But have you, have you ever asked somebody to pray for something and you not pray for it? Come on. Come on. I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I've done it. I think, I think many of us have. Hey, pray for this. And, and, then, and then you don't even pray for it. The trouble is, that those are the moments where you need the most spiritual nourishment in, in the time of need. And it's in those times of need that should bring you to your knees, to bring you into his word, to bring you and say, Lord, I'm starving 
for your presence. I'm starving for your power. I'm starving for the victory and for the authority that you already gave me. I'm starving for it, so let me read more about it so my faith can increase. Let me pray so that I can be in your presence. Let me, let me see what you want me to do now. Okay. But we'd rather sit at a table of mockers because that's easy to do, right? To sit with other people, to gossip, to, to talk about life, you know, the th things that are going on. Distraction. It's easy. It's easy to get distracted. And then when the things of God are served, I don't really have time for that. But you just spent a whole hour by the water cooler talking about so-and-so got a new car and, 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 and such and such, but, you, but, but now that the table is served, I don't got time for that. So come on, church. We need to prioritize. We need to understand what, we, what, what we're called to do. All right, all right, back to the signs. Back to the signs. Some people are probably asking, but pastor, you said we should see signs. You said... Um, you know, uh, that, that we're asking for revival, that we should see miraculous, that the heal are going to be, uh, um, um, uh, that the sick are going to be healed, that the, 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 the possessed are going to be delivered. Like, you said these things, right? I'm glad you asked. I'm glad you asked. Yes, I did say that. Yes, I did. <laughs> we are seeking revival. Now, look at your neighbor and say, signs follow us. Now, let me tell you about that. Referring back to the beginning scriptures, Jesus was so upset with these Pharisees. He was upset. It bothered him. It said that he sighed like, ugh. You know, why are they asking for a sign? Why are they doing this? Now, we all know that the, the, the Pharisees, you know, in their heart, in their heart were wicked. They weren't asking for a sign so they, they could believe. We already knew where their heart was. They had hardened their hearts toward Jesus. What they wanted to do was they wanted to trap him. They wanted to find a way to discredit him. They wanted to find a way to debunk the fact that he was the Messiah. They wanted to find anything that they can use to use against him so then the people would not follow him. That's what they wanted. That's where their hearts were at. So he sighed because it didn't matter what he would do to them at that point. It didn't matter what he would show. We have to be careful who we lend our ear to. Those around us that just want to, 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 to discredit Christ, to discredit our faith. Be very careful. You know, we don't serve a God that's here to do magic tricks. We don't serve a God that's a genie, that we just got to go to his word and, and, and rub it. Oh, Lord, I need this. That's not the God that we serve. We don't serve a genie in a bottle. He's not here to do these magic tricks every time somebody asks us or to do a miracle every time you just feel like asking. You see, what happens is they have already hardened their hearts against him. This is, what, this is what frustrated him. The Pharisees and those around him had already heard and seen the things that he's done. It wasn't, it wasn't, the fa it wasn't a hush-hush a, a, a thing of the miracles that have already happened to this point. People knew who Jesus was. They had seen the miracles. They had heard the testimonies. And here he stands before the Pharisees and like, ah, oh, show us something. Show us and prove to us. Some of us have already seen his power. We've already experienced the miracles in our lives. We've experienced a, a powerful move of God in our lives, in our homes, in our families. And then we turn it around and we're saying, God, show me. Just, just remind me that you're real again. Come on. However, to those that believe, the signs will follow them. So yes, I did say that we want to see miracles. I did say that we want to see signs here of, of a powerful God. But it's not so that we can believe. Because we believe, the signs will follow us. Mark chapter 16, 17 to 18 says this, And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons, they will speak with new tongues, they will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. 
I don't need people going out trying to pick up snakes and drinking poison right now. You, you, you'll miss the whole thing of it. You're, you're missing it. Don't do that. Yes, we are pursuing revival. Yes, God is going to bring revival here to our city, to our church, to our community. He's going to do it. I believe he's already began to do it, and, we're, and there's some, already some things happening. There are some amazing testimonies even within our church family. And listen, y'all share the testimony just like Faye did. Faye, I know you're watching. Just like Faye shared a testimony, I will steal it, and I will share it if you don't. Because testimonies are not for us to keep to ourselves. Testimonies is to shout from the rooftops, yo, my God is amazing. Do you know what he did in my life? This is what he did. One day I was here, the next day I'm here. One day I have no job, three days later I have a job. I mean, that's what God does. Yo, I was sick, and, 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 and the church, they pray for me. They put oil on me, and I'm healed. Like, like yo, if you hear that, you're like, oh, snap. I, I'm going to pray when I get sick. I'm going to believe that he heals when I get sick. Well, if I lose my job, I'm going to pray because God provides. You know, and the thing is, it increases your faith when we hear testimonies of others. So don't keep it to yourself. And if you do and you tell me, I'm stealing it and I'm sharing it for you. <laughs> we believe in these things. We believe. We need to not seek the signs, but seek him. And this is a problem so many times. I, and there were the moments, there were like moments in life where, where people are seeking a person. There were people that God had, uh, ra had risen up that would prophesy, that would have bring some amazing teachings and, and, and sermons. And people would begin to follow seeking God's voice through the person. Always. And like, oh, you know what? You know what? I want God to speak to me. So, oh, so-and-so is in town. I'm just going to go here so God could talk to me. And we begin to chase people and not him and not God. Matthew 6.33 says, But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. We have become so distracted, uh, and, and the Lord is saying, Listen, I know there's a lot going on. I know a lot of people are saying something, but seek me. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. I know what you're going through. Come and, and tell me about it. Come to me so I can help you with this. You know, when we walk, when we walk in the light, signs will follow us. And the world will see his power through that. The Lord has given us his spirit and his word so that as we believe blindly and walk boldly, right, in the supernatural power that's given through us uh, via obedience and application of his word, we become that sign. The sign that some people are asking for, you will be that sign. God will do it through you. We will heal the sick when they come in sick. We will, you know, our shadows will bring healing to people and deliverance. What was Peter, was Peter better than you? Is, is, is he, does he have a special past that you don't? I mean, it, it, I mean, come on, tell me. Or was he man and, and made of flesh and bones just like we are? Our presence brings life to a room. People will run to the Lord because of the spirit of the Lord that's within you. People will be delivered because you will cast out evil spirits in the name of Jesus. There are so many people bound. Doesn't that break your heart? I mean, is it, am I the only one? Am I the only one? Can you envision, can you envision chains that, that keep people stuck to certain things? Imagine a chain here. Oh, that's a good illustration. Imagine like a chain stuck to a box and the box saying depression. And everywhere you go, it doesn't matter how sunny it is, how dark it is, or, or, or how happy people are around you, you are chained to a box that says depression. You will be depressed until the chains of depression are broken. Doesn't that hurt? Doesn't that, doesn't that break your heart that there are people chained to so many things? To, to, to wrath, to anger, to depression, to suicide. I mean, there's so much that people are in bondage to, they are chained to, and they are, they are, their soul is crying out for deliverance. God wants to use you so that you can be that sign 
for the unbeliever that's about to jump off a cliff. A, an unbeliever that, that's going to take his life and say, you know what? There is no God. That sign, that sign, you become that sign. The world needs us to be his hands and feet as a, as a church. That's what we're here. To bring forth life and for these signs to follow us. In closing, in closing, I want to say this. As we continue to believe, as we continue to believe, right, and have faith, we also unite. And I throw this in here because it's relevant to our situation in our country right now. You know, it's relevant. It's not about picking a side. Oh, come on, listen. If you are following me, if you're watching the things I'm posting and reading and saying, you can't take it like I'm making a statement for a specific side. I'm telling us that we need to unite. The body of Christ needs to unite. Our, the church cannot be separate right now. The body of Christ needs to unite because when we unite, without uniting, we, can't con we cannot convince the world of his love. How do we want to preach the love of God if within the church, the church is divided itself? What kind of love is that? Christians are, are against each other, and, and that church is against that church, and, and, and this denomination is against this denomination, and, and they back this person, and they back that person, and all before you know it, the church is it, it's crumbling right in our hands. How do you think God feels when he looks down at his church, at his bride? How do you think he feels? Listen, I said it last week. I don't use a podium to push political agendas. I never will. So it doesn't matter, like, which president or whatever you feel. But God is saying, I'm so worried about a president. I'm so worried about a political party. And, 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 and my heart is broken. God's heart is broken. Because his people can't agree on his word. We don't have to agree on some other things. We don't have to. And it's okay. You're still my friend. I still love you because technically, I mean, hey, the word tells me to love you, right? But we don't do that. Oh, Jamal, I can't, can't, can't rock with Jamal. He doesn't believe the same thing I believe. He doesn't feel the same way I feel. Well, how is that loving? How is that loving? Isn't that one of the greatest commands that he gives us, to love one another? Did he say to love one another according to what political party you want to be at? Did he tell you to love one another uh, according to what agenda you're, you're choosing to follow right now? Did he tell you to love one another considering whatever is the latest trend right now, whatever the latest distraction is right now? Is he telling you to love one another according to what's happening in society? He doesn't say that, church. If I had a lot of hair, I'd probably be pulling my hair out because it's so frustrating to watch on social media just how everybody is just tearing each other apart. You share an opinion on how you feel about something, and then they want to put you in a box. Oh, you must be this. You must be that. People deleting people off Facebook that have been friends for decades. How is that love? How, I mean, how is it? My, my God doesn't tell me to love you according to who you want to vote for. I'm going to love you no matter what. That is what the church is supposed to be doing. And trusting in God. God, you got this. You want to vote for somebody? Vote for whoever you want to vote for. Pray about it. Pray about it and vote for whoever you feel God tells you to vote for. And keep loving everyone besides if they voted for the same person you voted for. Come on. Let's, let's go back to being the church. 
Let's go back. Let's not be distracted by all this. I mentioned that I want to see revival, don't you? I want to see the signs follow us, don't you? I want to see people getting healed, don't you? The, 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 bound, the bound delivered, I want to see those things. And it happens when the church unites. It happens when we're together in unity. That's when it happens. We can't get so distracted on other things. Because then what we're saying is the things of the Lord are, here, let me put that on the back side because this is what's important right now. John 17, 20 and 23 says, I am praying not only for these disciples, but also for all those, for all who will ever believe in me through their message. I pray that they will all be one, just as you and I are one. This is Jesus praying to the Father. As you are in me, Father, and I am in you, and may they be in us so that the world will believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me so that they may be as one as we are one. I am in them and you are in me. May they experience such perfect unity that the world will know that you sent me and that you love them as much as you love me. Church, don't we want, the, don't we want to see those lost souls saved? We have family members that we pray for all the time. We have friends that we love dearly, right? The Bible says that as we unite, they will see him. As we unite, they will see the love that he has for them. But if there's no unity, how can we expect them to see this? Jesus wants to heal. He wants to deliver. And most of all, he desires that the world comes to salvation. They will believe that he is Lord. They will believe that Jesus is the Messiah when they see us in perfect unity. That's what his scripture says. That's what the word says. As we believe, we obey. No signs are needed for us to be able to obey, to believe. Now I know that's like, but I, man, I kind of like asking God for signs and stuff. Listen, his word is enough. Some of us, when we ask for a sign, and I'm not saying you can never put something before God. We saw how Gideon did it. I know people are going to be like, oh, Gideon put it, and he said, I get it. I'm not saying we can't. I'm just saying don't seek the signs. There's a big difference. Don't seek the signs. Seek him, and the signs will follow you. His word is enough, church. Is his word enough for you? So today I just want to pray with you. I want to pray with you all today. For those that are here, for those that are watching online, I want us to take a moment and ask ourselves that question. I want you to ask yourself, am I guilty of this always asking for a sign? Am I guilty of never going to the Word? Am I guilty of just pawning off my petitions because I'm too busy to pray? But I know if someone prays, God will answer. Am I guilty of asking for a sign because I'm too lazy to open the Bible? Let's be honest with ourselves today. You don't have to raise your hand and you, no, one's, no one's got to know that's you. But be honest before the Lord and say, God, help me to depend on you first. Help me to seek you first. Help me to go in your word first. And Lord, use me that I may be a sign for someone who is an unbeliever to see your power through me. Father God, I thank you, Lord, for your word today. I pray right now that you just stir our hearts right now, God. That you may show us right now that you will reveal to us the condition of our heart, Lord. Lord, am I guilty? Am I guilty of pawning off things because I just don't make time for you? 
Am I guilty of uh, of asking for a sign because I'm too lazy or too busy to get into your word? Am am, Am I guilty because I don't have a passion to get to know you the way I should? And I don't make the time that I should to get intimate with you, Lord. Father God, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I ask that you touch every heart listening today. That you stir up and you ignite a passion, a fire, Father God, that that no man can put out. A fire for, for a hunger of your word, a hunger for your presence, a hunger, Father God, for your Holy Spirit. That Sunday just isn't enough. That even midday Bible study isn't enough. That they have to seek you daily. That they come before you daily. That they renew their minds daily like you ask, that you tell us in your word. Father God, right now, clean our heart, cleanse our hearts, Father, and restore us to a place where we desire you first. Lord, I pray right now for those that don't have a relationship with you, that need you, Lord, that are walking lost right now. Perhaps they're asking for a sign. And you are speaking to them right now. You are speaking to them right now. Take their life right now. Shake it up. Show them, Father God, how much you truly love them and how much you desire a relationship with them. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen.